This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Alright, so last time on Fruit of Grisea, honestly the last stream was my favorite stream of this game we've had thus far. We got to delve into Sachi's past, which was really interesting, and I personally really liked it because it was just good, well-written story. It was There wasn't all these like unnecessary dirty jokes, it was just very intriguing. And I... <laughs> I enjoyed playing through it so much that I ended up doing like a four-hour stream instead of like a two-hour stream. It happens sometimes. Alright. We're continuing Good Girl, Bad Girl. Uh-oh. I don't like that title. Where is this gonna go? Alright, so I think Sachi was having like a dream flashback of her past at the same time Yuji was reading through her file that JB gave, so they, they kind of both experienced her past again. All roots are good here. I've heard people say all the roots are good. I still don't know if I'm going to do them all, though. So this is Sachi's past, huh? Although the fire brigade rushed to the scene and extinguished the flames before the building could suffer much structural damage, the main classrooms were reduced to charred wrecks. As it contained the highest concentration of flammable materials in the building, the faculty room suffered particularly severe damage, and the scheduled midterm ex examinations had to be postponed indefinitely. Rumors that Sachi had been responsible spread quickly throughout the town, and when interviewed by the police, she immediately confessed to total responsibility for the incident. However, her motivation was unclear, and testimony from her classmates revealed that Sachi had been subjected to chronic bullying. Her confession was deemed unreliable, and suspicion came to rest on her tormentors. Oh! In the end, the investigators couldn't find any decisive evidence identifying the responsible party, and the arson case was closed without charges. Interesting. None nonetheless, Sachi's aunt and uncle were disturbed by her confession and abnormal behavior throughout the incident. They had her receive a comprehensive psychiatric examination from a specialist, leading to a secondary diagnosis. Given her overall condition, they were told it would be ill-advised and potentially dangerous for Sachi to continue attending a normal school. Soon after, it was arranged for her to transfer to Mahama Academy. In other words, witnessing that accident had damaged Sachi's mind far more severely than was immediately apparent. Par apparently, she did like a complete 180 in her personality. Well, not quite a 180, but... Hardcore changed. Considering what I know of her current mindset, I doubt she even regards setting that fire as a mistake. Today, Sachi remains under the guardianship of her childless aunt, uh, aunt and uncle. Her mother is still in the hospital, deep in a persistent coma. That would be a rough summary of how things currently stand. I toss the papers down onto the bench and look into the sky. In other words, there's a lot more to Sachi than what I've seen so far. Back then, the only thing I knew was that Sachi's parents were busy with work and didn't pay much attention to her anymore. And these documents are business-like summaries pulled from Ichigaya's databases. I have the basic facts in sufficient detail to speculate, but it's hardly a comprehensive story. At the moment, Sachi's probably the only person in the world who knows the precise nature of the suffering that reshaped her personality so dramatically. Even so, there's one thing I can say for certain. She suffered an incredibly cruel and abrupt loss at a young age. These six flimsy sheets of paper couldn't possibly have contained everything she went through. Oh, so he got a severely abridged version of what we saw last stream. Okay. I remember her saying that, and I remember pointing out that she said it past tense. From the way Sachi spoke those words, I think they were absolutely true. And that means she saw the people she loved most in the world fatally injured before her eyes. In the reports, her parents are described as a hard-working couple who cared deeply for their daughter. Their reputation in the neighborhood was excellent. Even without knowing the details of their relationship with Sachi, it's easy to understand that losing them would have been shocking and painful under any circumstances. What's more, it happened on her birthday. And... From the dates, it must have been the day after I said goodbye. At the time, my friendship with the girl in the playground had become my strongest source of emotional support. If the same had been true for Sachi, as well. In a single day, she lost her closest family members and her closest friend. So those words she's so fond of. Good girl. Bad girl. She tried to drag me to the playground with an arbitrary promise. She ran out of her house that day without listening to her parents. And all of a sudden, she found herself alone. Her thought process isn't difficult to imagine. I was a selfish bad girl, and everyone went away. 
From now on, I have to be a good girl and do what I'm told. Carried to the extreme, that's no different from turning yourself into an obedient, thoughtless robot. Yep. So I was half right. Sachi's not quite a robot, but has some characteristics. When the teachers tell her to work hard at her studies, she works hard. When some idiot tells her to wear a maid uniform, she never takes it off. Her own will and the intentions behind the orders are irrelevant. Performing them to the letter is the whole point. Sachi, you gotta understand there's a difference between being good and doing everything you're told to do by everybody. In fact, there's no way those two can be concurrent. Doing what she's told it to is an end in itself. Sachi was only a child at the time. This simplistic, obsessive obedience was the sole coping method she could find. The only way she could escape her regret and guilt. No one has the right to blame her for that. Sachi stopped thinking for herself as a self-defense mechanism. Her wounds were so severe that she lost the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. That warped, absolute allegiance to her principles culminated in the school arson incident. To take the most extreme possible example, if someone unambiguously ordered Sachi to kill someone right now, she might commit murder without hesitation. The commandment she imposed on herself is a dangerous vein, a brittle wall as likely to harm as protect. All things considered, might have been lucky that it was only arson. The more people know about Sachi's abnormality, the greater the risk of someone attempting to exploit it. An event like that was all but in inevitable. For the same reason, it makes sense that she was transferred to this academy, with its small student body and limited contact with the outside world. Yeesh. The question now is whether I can actually do anything with this knowledge. I might be sitting here and analyzing other people's abnormalities, but I'm well I'm not a well-adjusted person myself by any stretch of the imagination. Good good to, way to in, be introspective. Can I of all people help regain someone regain normality? If there's one thing that gives me hope, it's the expression I saw on Sachi's face back then. Thinking it over now, I'm even more firmly convinced that her smiles have always been artificial, forced things. But just that once, something was clearly different. Something that makes me think I can bring her back. Might sound like flimsy grounds for optimism, but... At our first meeting, my master took one look at me and declared, We can still fix this one. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say about somebody, but I, I get it. Come to think of it, my master told me something once. Accepting a favor isn't anything to be ashamed of, kid. But not returning it is. There's no need to overthink this. From that perspective, it's really very simple. Back then, Sachi's presence in my life saved me, and today, I have a chance to repay the favor. That's enough for now. Um... Oh, you're here? Okay, I forgot Principal was there. Back to the hospital room. Oh no. Not Sachi's panic attack. No! Uh oh. What is Makina walking herself into? Yeesh. Oh, everyone's here. Oh boy. Oh, are they gonna wake her up? Good. Of course. <laughs> We're getting the super intense music for waking her up. That's kind of interesting. You were not shouting. Uh oh, what is Makina gonna do? How come Makina was able to wake her up? Oh yeah, cause cause Michiru wasn't actually yelling, she was just like, hey, kinda wake up. 
ちゃん。うん。他にも。黒いのも一緒なのよ。How did you know I just recorded Candyland Adventure, Makina? <laughs> Yumiko described as Queen Frostate is fantastic. <laughs> Thank goodness there's a hospital around here. Everyone was. Don't throw her under the bus. Very true. だってさっちゃんは友人と約束した場所で待ってただけなんでしょはい。約束しましたから。え、そっか。だったらさっちゃんは何も悪くない。うん。マネさん。さすがマネなのよ。心の大きさが胸に巻き込まれるよ。Really mocking her? You could have picked a better comparison. Sachi, you need to get better. Okay, click. Back to the dorm. Gig, 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 gig. Do you have a splinter or something? Oh. Nope, she's just getting her hair brushed. Jeez, Amine, are you using, like, a steel wool brush? <laughs> when I enter the dorm for the first time in three days, I'm greeted by the familiar sight of Amine grooming Makina in the lobby. Hey, Amine. Sachi scheduled to leave the hospital today, right? Sup? Sorry, I had to clean another five-story Taco Bell. Well, here and there. Hiver and thiver. <laughs> Sorry, I had a job come in. Then I needed to butter up JB for a while. Couldn't find the time to come back. Yep, it's where you take butter and then slather her over her clothes so she can <laughs> so she can go on the slip and slide without getting wet. Well, I guess you could say that was part of the job too. Oh, is she dyeing her hair again? How gr how grand? I think that's just her regularly scheduled maintenance. Actually, I was going to ask if you'd let me take care of that by myself. 
I'm not dating her, but... Uh... I'm not dating her. I literally couldn't think of any other excuse. I literally, I was all through that. I was trying to think of an excuse to give Yuji. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> yeah, I do understand that you'd want to be there. This is just me being selfish. But the thing is, I've got something important to discuss with Sachi, so it'd be more convenient if we could have some privacy. Yeah, I do. Don't worry, I'm planning to fill you in afterward. Well, they know. Amine rests her hand on her chin and nods thoughtfully. I have a buy one, get one free meal at Culver's, and I can only take Sachi. There. <laughs> That's my excuse. Wait, what did you say? Oh, Nickers and Twist. I didn't even read that. I was busy talking about Culver's. Well, French baguettes are pretty good. They're nice and crisp, and you can make some good sandwiches with them. Hey, if it's good enough bread, that can be an effective bribe. Hmm... I'm not particularly conscious of that myself, but I guess I'll have to take their word for it. Snacks, snacks, snacks! <laughs> I do like, I do really like that face that Makina has there. <laughs> Sorry, you two. Sachi has like one suitcase. Yeah, of course. Absolutely not. That would be inappropriate. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Truth. When I quietly open the door to her hospital room, I find Sachi up and about, neatly folding her blankets next to the bed. I'd bet good money that you're one of those people who make their own bed when staying in a hotel. Anybody could guess from a look at this little scene. Well, if they weren't distracted by the completely out of place made outfit first. Sachi, you need more than one casual outfit. Well, I don't think it's exactly a formal occasion or anything. We need to find the person who ordered her to do that. Slap him. Make him take it back. Right. There's an awkward moment before I can manage to respond. Now that I know about Sachi's principles, those typical words inspired a twinge of something like pity. Alright, I'll take care of the betting. No, my chat is showing on stream. Just, chat is not very active right now. <laughs> You're still recovering. Spare the back talk for another time, alright? Also, how's it going, Nick? <laughs> sure. Changing places of Sachi at the side of her bed, I quickly remove the sheets and begin to fold the mattress. As I work, Sachi stares intently at my face. You have something you want to ask me? Go ahead. Well, I have a buy one, get one free meal at Culver's, and I wanted to take you out to lunch to celebrate you leaving the hospital. 
There's something strange about me coming to pick you up from the hospital? That, that's because I had to clean another five-story Taco Bell, but this time it was in Singapore. Oh, you miss me? Aww. I was more just like, why did you do that? <laughs> and why would you think that? Very true. I see. So that's it. As she speaks, Sachi's expression is distinctly downcast. Not a look you see on her face often. Normally, Sachi can present an expression of unperturbed, detached calm under virtually any circumstances. This must have been bothering her a great deal. And if so... Actually, Sachi, I had something I wanted to discuss with you. It's sort of related to your question just now. Yeah, it's kind of important. What? No, we're not watching soap operas. That what's that's important to you? News to me. That a fact. We seem to have gotten a bit sidetracked here. Anyway, let's finish up here first. We can talk after. Meanwhile, Immediately after returning from the hospital of Sachi, I arranged for all of our dorm mates to gather in the classroom, resulting in this admittedly justifiable barrage of questions. Yeah, why'd you, why'd you do that, bo boy? Sorry to stand on ceremony and all, but this is something of a formal report, so I figured it couldn't hurt to have an appropriate setting. Yeah, in order to assure that Mahama Academy retains a harmonious living environment for everyone here, there's something I need to announce to all of you immediately. Well, to get straight to the point, Saji and I are dating now. Wow, okay. Did you, um... Ask her out at the hospital, or are you just making this up off the fly, or are you just assuming that that's what she wants? I mean, it was very clearly obvious that Makina and Amine knew about it when we spent literally 30 seconds going, uh, when we were trying to think of it, something, but. <laughs> you all knew. You knew, and you knew. I draw Sachi up to my side, by the waist, say what needs to be said, and wait. The classroom goes dead silent for a long moment. Our four classmates, scattered randomly across the room, stare up at us. A range of uncomprehending and quizzical expressions frozen on their faces. In the end, the first to break the increasingly awkward stalemate is Sachi. <laughs> I was waiting for her to just say, We are? <laughs> Oh, Michiru would be. They, they all wanted to date me. Why? Michiru is so mad right now. Michiru, if you were interested in dating Yuji, you were doing a pretty bad job of showing it. Wow, stop being so rude. Don't agree with that. Okay, Michiru is one fan, but I didn't really expect the rest of you to have trouble getting your heads around this. Is it really? You were the one who was telling us not to screw in the hospital room, Makina. <laughs> 
Sorry, Yumiko, April Fool's Day was two days ago. Hold it, Sakaki. Two things. One, it's July. Two, what are you planning to do with that? Really? I was starting to like you again, Yumiko. Hmm... Alright, I'll say this again as unambiguously as I can. Sachi and I really are dating. Not a joke. <laughs> but sometimes that's part of the joke. <laughs> when I declare the matter in the simplest possible terms, a brief silence settles on the classroom for the second time in the last few minutes. <laughs> I know. It, it's so it's so convenient that it's so close to April Fools when I'm playing this. <laughs> I mean, when you buy a, go a girl free culvers, one thing leads to another, and, you know. Okay then, Sachi, as for that important discussion... I love the heart transition. I want you to be my girlfriend. Alright with you? If you ask her that, she's going to think she has to say yes! See, I don't like that. If she is in the mindset where she has to obey every single thing that we ask her to do, she's going to agree whether she actually physically wants to or not. So I, I actually don't like that. Um, hmm. Maybe maybe that's where the root's gonna go. Maybe that's gonna create the drama and tension. <laughs> and it's possible that Yuji knew that. Like, going in, and... I don't know. <laughs> that's a perfect metaphor, Michiru. It's okay, I also asked her to join the soccer team, and she said yes to that, too. Look around you, Amine. There are no other options. <laughs> if, she doesn't, if she doesn't date Yuji, someone else will, and then she's screwed. She has- there are no other guys here. Ooh! See, I'm liking how Yumiko is... <laughs> I'm liking how Yumiko is actually taking this seriously. Like, I- I see where this is going. This ain't a good vein. <laughs> that's- that's always what you say when it's like, Oh, what do you think of this person you're dating? Well, I don't dislike them. Come on, Sachi, say yes or no. Uh-huh, that's what I was afraid of. The moment those words leave Sachi's mouth, the tense atmosphere in the classroom softens rapidly. Amine's like, <laughs> excellent, I can break them up. <laughs> Yeah, she cannot tell a lie. And the aggressive inquisitors, who'd seemed just about ready to physically go for my throat a minute ago, not in apparent satisfaction. I don't quite follow, but... Does that mean none of you have any objections? <laughs> Look, of course we have no objections! This romance ain't gonna last! <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the problem. I'm not holding a gun to her head, am I? Hey Sachi, if you don't like this idea, I'm completely fine with you turning me down, alright? You can be honest. So, keeping that in mind, I'm going to ask one more time. You willing to be my girlfriend? There! Straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> okay, let me ask you something. How would a fair romance work, exactly? Pursuing someone romantically means trying to monopolize their affection. Of course you use everything you can to try and get a foot in the door. Love's fundamentally selfish. What? 
that is an incredibly warped view. I don't see any real difference between my strategy here and, say, your Sundere vein. Or Amine and her chest blubber attacks, am I wrong? <laughs> yeah! It's, this is all just crap that he's saying. <laughs> Alright. I'm not unsympathetic to your complaints. If you feel Sachi's consent isn't enough under the circumstances, I'll provide you with an even better argument. Yeah, truth is, I've kept this quiet until now, but... Drum roll, please. <laughs> Sachi and I are childhood friends! Free people. That's my favorite character from Grisea. Free people. And so the third silence settles on the classroom. It's true. Childhood friend is usually best girl. Incidentally, back when we called each other Sa back then we called each other Sachan and Yukun. Y <laughs> why why was that why was that so embarrassing to you, Yumiko? That's not all! Back in the day, we kissed on a regular basis. You are lying! No, a smack is like... Yes. You've got a lot of nerve calling someone else a Lolita, Makina. So, anyway, put a romantic spin on all this, and you could call it a miracle that Sachi and I were reunited here. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure Lolita is, like, lolly. Like, very young person who wants to be in a romantic relationship. Or young-looking person. Call it what you want. The odds of us meeting again were incredibly low. Probably millions to one. Yet here we are! Why are you- I don't know, understand why Yumiko is getting so worked up here. Also, how a romance starts off isn't the most important thing. What matters is how you grow into it. I actually kind of agree with that. Yeah. I know Sachi probably doesn't have clear romantic feelings for me yet, but when I found her, she'd been waiting for me in the pouring rain for an entire day without even an umbrella. I've been thinking things over seriously since, ever since then, and I've made up my mind. I want to see her happy, so I'm going to make that happen, whatever it takes. I'll protect Sachi to the extent that she's comfortable with, and I won't make her regret becoming my girlfriend. I can promise you people that. Still have a problem? Find someone who can make her happier than I can, and I'll gladly step aside. But not until then! <laughs> Checkmate! Hmm, it seems I've reduced Amine to illiterate grunts. <laughs> v frown! Amine's tone of voice is vaguely sulky. Not unexpected in her case, but I'm slightly surprised to see Sakaki and Michiru showing similarly mixed emotions on their faces. I mean, that was rudely put, Makina, but you got the point down. There's five girls and one guy. Obviously, they're all going to fight for the guy. Unless... Actually, no! Yuji is a complete tool. I was going to say, unless they're a complete tool, but Yuji kind of is a complete tool, and they still want him, so... so, so Okay, let's try this again. You willing to accept our relationship? Okay, 
Good. Okay. You haven't said yes yet, Makina. Thanks for the summary, but what about what about you, Makina? Hmm. So Sachi's just never allowed to cry now that I'm dating her. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. Sounds about right. I don't know. I think she might just be quoting stuff she heard on TV. She said all of those words with just, uh, really? Hmm. Seems like I've managed to persuade them for the time being. All right, then. Looks like we're pretty much done here. Sachi and I are going to head out now. Yeah, wanted to talk some stuff over now that things are official. All right, later. Let's go, Sach. I literally just removed the final syllable from her name. <laughs> no, I think it's pretty normal. <laughs> oh no. What will I do if Makina tries to kill me? Oh no. She's so powerful. <laughs> I can't imagine. Then again, in the opening, we did see a CG of Makina holding a shotgun and aiming it at someone. So maybe we should be scared. <laughs> I did not want to do that. <laughs> After heading out onto the roof of Sachi and Toe, I lean back against the tall wire fence and exhale. Phew! Our classmates' reactions were a little unpredictable, but in the end I managed to get their consent, if not approval. With our relationship established, I'll be able to spend more time with, around Sachi without it seeming unnatural. Simply being there should be a good first step. Uh-oh. Why is she glaring at us? Sachi stands at my side with typically excellent posture, staring off vaguely into the distance as if lost in thought. Sort of threw things into a commotion the instant you got out of the hospital, didn't I? You feeling alright? Oh, yes. Well, physically, maybe. That a fact. Even so, she responds to my question immediately, turning towards me with a pleasant smile on her face. To be sure, that's all but completely standard Sachi, but the way she was gazing off absentmindedly instead of waiting attentively for her next orders is a little unusual. Also, I know this is a little late in the game, but sorry about springing the girlfriend thing on you out of nowhere. Happy, huh? If what Sachi calls happiness now was really something deserving of the name, I don't think I would have gotten this worried about her. At the moment, she's buried her feelings so deep that she can't even give herself a straight answer about whether she likes me. But, for the same reason, becoming a formal couple should be a meaningful development. Anyway, I know it must seem sudden, but I meant what I said to the others. Now that we're dating, I'm going to put real effort into being your boyfriend. That's a promise. Fair warning, I'm planning to give you a few pushes forward, to help you be yourself. I'm not going to explain yet. You have to wait and see. That it is. Get a bit excited? <laughs> Don't be silly, Sachi. That's not till next week. Uh, you really should be. Look, there's no point in acting surprised now, okay? She is a robot. Basically, at this point. Even in casual, aimless conversations like this, Sachi's self-imposed rules regularly assert themselves. No matter what happened in the past, she's a student at Mahama Academy now. In that case, we may as well get her a few appropriate memories to remember her student life by. 
I think that's what Sachi needs more than anything else right now. It's not going to solve all her problems, but it's a necessary start. Okay, here's the thing. Now that we're in a relationship, there are three things I want you to try and do for me, Sachi. That's one thing, and no. Not only are you spectacularly wrong, but all three of those mean the exact same thing. Number one. Try to spend as much time with me as you can, within reason. Okay, that's a little cleany. Roughly, yeah, but I'm not looking to establish any hard and fast rules here. Don't think too hard about these. Sachi closes her eyes and nods slightly to herself in a familiar gesture. Come to think of it, this probably signifies the moment where she binds herself to a new precept. Okay, second up. From now on, I want you to try and actively think about the reasons behind veins. That's right. Remember that time a while back when Michiru asked you to bring her a metal bat? Oh yeah, that was a while ago. That's right. At the time, you told me you weren't interested in the reason Michiru wanted the bat. But I think you'd be better off showing a little more curiosity about things like that. For one thing, some effort in that department should help cut down on the number on those weird misunderstandings you're always making. All right. As for number three, generally speaking, I want you to observe my behavior carefully. Yeah, let's see. As your boyfriend, I'm going to spend a lot of time with you. We'll do plenty of things together and talk a lot more than we used to. So, as my girlfriend, I'd like you to actively make note of how I act in any given situation. Take notes, there will be a quiz later. I know you might not understand at the moment, but I think it's going to be helpful down the road. Yeah, you do that. So far, so good. If these rules function properly, the time we spend together should prove beneficial to Sachi. How about being beneficial to you as well, Yuji, because I got news for you. She's not the only one who needs to grow, bro. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say, but do you have any questions on your end, Sachi? Good to hear. Shoot. <laughs> I was just thinking how unusual it was for you to be staring off into the distance, but you were worrying about that, of all things. Do you plan on getting involved in combat operations, Sachi? Seriously, do they have? Do, do the developers and writers of this game have to, like, insult Michiru every few sentences? Seriously. You know, Michiru would bite your leg if she heard that. But, considering the Michiru sama incident, this does seem to be a fairly important point to Sachi. Hmm. Alright, if it's that big of a deal to you, I'll think it over carefully. That said, the nickname before was a completely spur of the moment thing, and Sachi has always worked pretty well for me. Alright, I think I'm going to stick with Sachi after all. It's what I'm used to at this point. Let's see. The way she is now, Sachi'd probably call me Oni-chan or Darling without even batting an eyelid if I asked. Might be something worth taking advantage of, since I have the chance. Alright then, from now on, why don't you call me Yukun the way you used to? I wanted- I was hoping we'd get a choice- a choi- like, a choice for a bunch of different options, and we could type in our own, like, nickname. You learn in Sachi. Yeah, I guess. It's kind of nostalgic, and first names feel more natural for a couple, don't you think? 
If you like, I can call you Sachan myself. No, Amane now needs to find a new thing to call you. Alright, understood. As always, she's seriously awkward when it comes to expressing what she really wants. Is she eavesdropping? Oh, she did eavesdrop. They're all eavesdropping, of course. What the heck? These people are the worst. なんか覗き見るのも悪い気がしてくるくらいだったかも。な。だから私は最初から言ってるのよさ。お前らはちょっと間を置きな。本当幼児のことをお兄ちゃんって呼ぶくらい気に入ってるくせに、何言ってるだ